Hey there, Sagittarius. Welcome to your uh, rest of the year love reading. We are just going to jump right in here, Sag, and we are going to see uh, what is going on in your general energies in this first row right here. Uh, next, we're going to look at their current feelings for you. So this could be a, per a new person, an old person, whatever, whatever you're dealing with, doesn't matter. But we're going to look right here. Uh, next, we're going to look at uh, who is coming towards you. <laughs> it could be an old woman, apparently, according to this card here, Sagittarius. So I don't know if you're into old ladies or what, but you know, I'm not here to judge. So you do you, Sagittarius. Uh, and at the end, we're going to look at the uh, unexpected, anything unexpected that could be coming in for you in love in this position right here. But uh, Sag, let's see, uh, you start off here in the general energies with this darker male. Again, in these uh, general readings, obviously it could be man, woman, whatever, whatever gender you're into, doesn't matter to me. So it could just be a darker person. I do feel like it could be a person with dark hair, dark skin. I mean, you know, I'm getting like everything. Um, maybe they always wear black like like me. <laughs> so who, who knows? But, um, you know, what I would say here is that it could be like this person. I want to see what the next car card is as well. It says freedom. This person says casual, being single, lightness. So some of you might just be in like single mode and this person kind of enters into your life, but uh, we'll see what comes up. You have the chariot, the two of wands and the six of swords here. Look at like a lot of travel energy here in the world as well. Um, you're not the only sign that's had this, but um, again, could be like someone long distance or you could be this person while traveling or, want it, or while on an adventure. You know, I, I kind of said to someone else and I'll say it to you, it's like the, this year, I've never seen so many adventure cards in my life. Like the Knight of Wands, for example, comes up a lot outside of love readings, right? So I kind of feel like the universe is trying to get us out into the world. We've all been locked up for too long, right? So it makes sense to me that you could be meeting a person while on an adventure, while traveling, but you don't even have to travel. Maybe you're just like, um, you know, going apple picking. Or uh, maybe you're just like going on an adventure in your town or something like that. Or maybe you're going on the adventure of going back to school or getting a new job or whatever. These are all adventures. I think people think adventure, they think travel, but it could be any type of adventure. And I feel this could lead to a victory. It could be with a person uh, who becomes very important for you is what I'd say with this chariot card. I think also what's important is that this person changes your perspective in life in some way. You go down to the world to the hangman. So I feel like you could literally be meeting a person who changes the way that you see the world. So, you know, this person could just have different views and not in a bad way, you know, like in a good way. Maybe they just kind of open your eyes. And I kind of get that feeling for you here, Sagittarius. You have the two of wands. Again, you're going to have to get out into the world to meet this person. He, you know, he's standing at the top of this castle. Down here is his village. And it basically represents him needing to leave a comfort zone. So I feel like you have to leave the house Sagittarius to be able to meet someone. I feel like I shouldn't have to explain this, but uh, based off some comments I get from some people, I do. So you're not going to find this person sitting on your couch, right? So you have to get out there, risk it. You have to get out into the world, six of swords, moving on to commerce shores. I don't really get anything about a past person here, by the way. So I feel most of you are moving towards new love or you're just moving on to commerce shores and you're looking to, you know, improve your life clearly. And again, these life improvements are going to be the thing that probably um, brings love into your life. Let's see. Uh, with the chariot, you have this protection card. I feel like you're protected from risk. Like if you're thinking about going on an adventure, but you're like, it's risky at this time, or I don't want to take the risk. I feel like you're kind of protected from risk. Obviously, we're not talking about taking a crazy risk here. We're talking about just regular old risks that you know we all take from time to time. But I would put yourself out there. I think taking the risk of putting yourself out there would be good for you. With the two of wands, you have this assertion card. I feel like you're going to be meeting someone who's very assertive. Um, you know, you could be meeting a person who is like a little bit more on the aggressive side. I don't mean that in a bad way. Of course, I mean that in a good way. I just feel like they're kind of, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It's like they don't take no for an answer. But again, not in a, I don't want that to sound as bad as it does. <laughs> I think they're just persistent. But, you know, it, like if you tell this person to get lost, I think they'll get lost. It's not, it's not like they're going to be bothering you or stalking you or something, but I just feel like they're kind of like a little bit more persistent. And I also feel like that could be something that will actually attract you to them. Again, persistence is an attractive trait, you know, for the most part. It's like a person who doesn't give up, you know, is can be attractive. But again, I, like I don't think they're, it's not like in a creepy way. They're not going to be like following you around or anything like that. Like I said, I feel like they, they understand boundaries, right? But they're just persistent. And with the uh, Six of Swords, you have this concentration card. 
Uh, funny enough, I feel like you are very concentrated at this time. Look at this. To, we go to the world, to the temperance card. So you could be very focused on yourself or you could be concentrating on other things. I kind of feel like someone kind of comes out of nowhere here. Sad. So maybe you're not looking for love. Maybe you're not. Maybe it's just not at the top of your mind, right? And I feel that you're very concentrated and that's when you'll meet this person when you're like focusing on other things. Then this person is going to enter into your life. Uh, next, in the area of their current feelings towards you, Again, funny enough, for most of you, I don't think you know this person yet. I kind of feel like this is projecting into the future, if you will. And you can see here that these crows have built a sacred space for their eggs. So I feel for some of you that this person takes relationships very seriously that could be coming in for you. And I feel like they view relationships as very sacred. They could also view the home as very sacred as well. I kind of get like a protective energy of this person. They could be very protective, like of the relationship. So you know, just like a protective person. I don't know how else to say it. You have the fool, the world, and the hermit. Again, take the risk to get out into the world, plain and simple, Sagittarius. The world is about completing a cycle. In the major arcana, we go from the fool to the world, and then we start all over again as the fool. <laughs> so this reading is really telling me that you're starting a new cycle. Again, for most of you, I don't think you know this person yet. Uh, you know, maybe for a small percentage of you, you have your eye on a person, take it how it resonates. But I don't even think this person is in your life. Again, and if there is a person in your life, you're going to get married to this person probably. You know, especially if they're a positive person, you have the hierophant here. So if you're already with someone, looks good, plain and simple. But I feel like you're ending a cycle. You had to go through some stuff recently here. I do feel like you have to open up a little bit because we go hermit, moon, um, seven of wands. The moon is pretty much always positive to me. Unless it was, unless it had some negative cards around it, which it doesn't, uh, the moon is always positive. In my mind, the moon always says go towards the mountains. Now, again, if there were a bunch of negative cards here, that would change my, that would, you know, change my feelings about it. But obviously these are positive cards. But going to that seven of wands, it really tells me that you've gone through a dark night of the soul. You've gone through the darkness of the moon. And now it's time to open up. I feel this is saying like, you've learned everything you need to learn. You can see that he has his star in this lantern right here. So I feel like you need to kind of like let your star out. I feel like you need to get attention or kind of get some attention on some things that you're working on here. Uh, with the fool, again, take the risk. You can see here that there's this dog behind him here. So I feel for a lot of you, you could be attracting someone who is very loyal, who is like a true companion as well. And this person's gonna try to get your attention. It, again, it's funny, the fool, I, I definitely get this feeling from the reading. You can see that the fool is facing forward and that dog is nipping at his heels. So I kind of feel like, again, that love kind of maybe comes in, not, not really by surprise, but when you least expect it. I feel that's when this person could enter into your life for some of you. Um, now, of course, you're watching this, so you probably now are going to be expecting it. <laughs> but let's see. With the fool, you have this companionship card. I literally just said the word companion on the dog. So this person's like a true companion. I feel like there's like a ride or die type of person here. I like this. Uh, with the world, you have this manipulation card. Again, this is not manipulation like um, this person is going to be manipulative. This is a card of manipulating energy. It's actually a card of like as above, so below. And it is a card of using your you know, using your energy to attract what you want in your life. So I would definitely work on that. I also feel like you're protected from manipulation. You have the protection card down to the manipulation card. And the, the world really tells me that you're ending a cycle of manipulation. So maybe you dealt with mani a manipulative person in the past and you're ending the cycle. You're getting ready for a new beginning. And just trust that you learn the lessons of the past. Again, I, I get a lot of comments from people that are like, I've been hurt too many times. I, I'm never going to have love again. I, I'm writing off all men or all women or whatever. And I'm always like, well, okay, great. Now those people control your life, right? Those people who are no longer in your life control your life because they hurt you. And number two, it's like, we need to realize that we have learned things. It's like when we go, I always tell people at the end of pain of success, or you have to move a lot of dirt to get to the gold. It's like, don't just throw those things out because then you're not getting the reward for the things that you learned. So there's a reward in everything that we go through. And that's what I, what, what I try to tell people especially when I get energy like this. It's like saying, yes, maybe you were hurt in the past, but there are good people out there. They exist, <laughs> plain and simple. Maybe they're hard to find, but again, it, when you find them, it makes you appreciate them a million times more because you had to go through a lot to get to them in the first place. So that's why I always tell people, don't give up on love because you're just giving up on your gold. You're giving up on a reward. With the Hermit, you have this charity card. Uh, this card's come up quite a bit uh, during these readings. So pretty, pretty interesting. I think we could all be just attracting 
very generous people in general. Again, I think people are kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> and so, you know, you could be just attracting a person who's very generous, who's very kind and caring and like all those other things as well. Uh, next in the area of who's coming towards you, you have this old woman card. <laughs> so this card says sadness in female on it. Obviously, again, it's a general reading and it might not be a female. I do feel like you could be attracting an old soul, someone who is an old soul. I do feel like this person is in a period of sadness. So again, you could be attracting someone who is sad who, or who has recently also experienced a loss. Let's see what this next card is as well. Uh, you have this envelope card. It says unfolding surprise. So again, this person probably opens up and maybe they're in, a, why won't this work? There we go. Uh, so I feel like you could be attracting a person who's like opening up or, or who's about to reveal themselves, right? And I just feel like they've been in a period of sadness. Uh, you have the um, temperance card, you showing up here, Sagittarius, the moon and the hangman. I feel like this person is about to open up. Like I said, and you could be a big part of that with this um, temperance card. It's like you're showing up here and you're present in this position. So I feel like you could be the one that gets someone to open up to you. Like maybe they're sad about love and they're a little bit closed off a little bit of an old soul. Maybe they kind of like wish that things could be like they were back in the good old days or whatever, right? Where you would, you know, marry little Susie Gherkins from down the street, right? Which doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> but I kind of feel like you give this person hope. Uh, I kind of feel you and this person are leaving a moon period at this time as well. Uh, so I feel for both of you, you could be meeting a person who's on a very similar path to you. I also feel like this person is kind of slowly releasing their emotional armor. This lobster here, is, or crayfish, whatever you want to call it, is climbing out onto the land here. Lobsters don't belong on the land, right? They can't move very well on the land because they're wearing a bunch of armor, right? They belong in the water. So, I feel, but I also feel like a release here. So, I feel like you could be really meeting a person who's just kind of like in that space of being open. I feel like they've gained a new perspective, probably by seeing you. Their head is glowing. I feel like this per you're meeting a person who's sacrificed a lot and you know they maybe they've sacrificed a lot in love but i also feel like that's what you will like about them is that they kind of you know you're meeting a person who's willing to give it all in a relationship and they're not afraid to do that even after they've been hurt a bunch of times so it's like th this person can't be can't be taken down right <laughs> and uh i just feel like it's a good person in general so let's see uh, with the temperance card, you have the enthusiasm card. Again, you make this person enthusiastic. I would say they like, I, I get on that temperance card that they see you, they're like, oh, that's my person. Or, you know, you kind of capture their attention in some way. And that's what I feel like this enthusiasm is talking about. Literally, look, sun in Sagittarius. It's literally you. You are the person that gets this person going. So there you go. With the moon, you have this risk card. We have seen a lot of cards here in this reading that would encourage you to take some sort of a risk. So if you see a person, don't be afraid to like go towards them. Don't be afraid to approach them or anything like that. I keep getting comments too from people that are like, I'm in receiving mode. Someone needs to come towards me. I'm like, so if the level of your life is standing across from you and you, you know you could easily approach them, you're just gonna allow them to walk away because you're in receiving mode, whatever the hell that means. It's like, I think people need to grow up in relationships. And I think that's a big part of the problem. This is tough love with Chris. This is not love. This is not like, you know, love with Chris. This is tough love with Chris, right? So I'm sick and tired of people saying that stuff because it's like, well, it's like if the love of your life is standing right there, you're, you're gonna allow your pride to allow you to not approach them. You know, it's like, it's ridiculous. So again, if you see someone that you really like, I would approach them. I would talk to them, do something, you know, like the good old days, drop your handkerchief in front of them, let them pick it up, right? That, you know, like what, whatever happened to that? I don't know. With the hangman, you have the discovery card. I, I feel like this person wants, you have so many cards of adventure. You have a lot of your own energy showing up in this reading. That is uh, Mercury and Sagittarius as well. I feel like you could be, this person you're attracting could be someone who wants to go on a lot of adventures, who wants to travel, who wants to have a good time, who wants to learn new things. And I definitely feel that's what you could be attracting here. Uh, next, you have this flag card that says, don't be tempted to lower your standards. Don't lower your standards. You have this barrel card that says, you feel something is lacking in your life, perhaps love, money, or goals. There you go. So maybe I kind of get this feeling of feeling this person, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Sometimes I think when maybe our soulmate is close or whatever the hell you want to call it, I don't believe in all the titles for relationships in the first place. I feel like they cause way more problems than anything else. And what I would say here is that sometimes I think when our person is near us or a person that we could be with, it's like we start to feel an emptiness, maybe not like total lack, but 
we feel like something is missing. It's because they're not in our life yet, but they're in our energy. And I kind of feel some of you could be feeling that. You have the Seven of Wands, the Hierophant, and the Nine of Cups here. Uh, I would definitely open up. Like I said, with this diagonal going to that Seven of Wands, I would open up here. But the Seven of Wands is kind of like drawing a line in the sand. And so I feel like you are kind of committing to your standards. But I also feel like you could be meeting a person who has high standards. But guess what? I feel you meet their standard. <laughs> so there you go. It's like two people with high standards that, uh, but it's like you've earned it with the Hierophant is what I would say here. It's like sometimes I think there are people who have high standards, but it's like they aren't willing to meet a standard either. <laughs> so it's like you can't have high standards, but also not meet the standard, right? That doesn't work. And I think that's also why a lot of people are single nowadays. But what I would say here is that I feel like you meet the standard. The Hierophant, I also feel like you've been like praying and asking for a person, or if you haven't, you will be soon. And I, I think what's surprising is that you're getting the person. And then you have the Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups is like a wish or a dream come true. So I feel like you could be attracting a person who is like a wish, who is a dream come true. Uh, this is a very good love reading. It's pretty straightforward as always with you, Sagittarius. Now with the Seven of Wands, you have the Devotion card. Oh, I love this card. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. So I feel like someone is very devoted to you. Someone's really willing to put in the work. Someone really wants to make it work. And, you know, Seven of Wands is like defending your position at the top of a hill. So it's a total commitment. And I feel like a person coming in for you is totally committed and like sees you as your person. Again, I feel like you bring, it's almost like you bring life into this person's life with that enthusiasm card. I don't think they're like a depressed you know, depressed or anything like that, this person. I feel like they're fine in life, but I just feel like maybe they've, you're attracting a person who is like, okay, maybe the spark doesn't exist, right? And you're bringing that spark into their life or vice versa, you know, take it how it resonates. With the Hierophant, you have this extremism card. I would be careful of extremes at this time, just in general, Neptune and Pisces. You know, I blame Neptune and Pisces for basically everything, but, but you know, the truth is the truth, right? <laughs> and what I would say here is that, you know, my problem with Neptune and Pisces, and then after 2025, Neptune moves into Aries, which I think is actually, as far as extremism is concerned, I think Neptune and Aries is worse for extremism. But what I would say here is that I feel like you need to be careful of like going, like thinking that things are all good or all bad. It's gonna be much better to like meet in the middle in all areas of your life, not just love. With the Nine of Cups, you have this vision card. Again, this card's come up for a lot of people as well. I think what this card is talking about is that we need to be very clear on like what we want in our relationships. And I feel the more clarity we have, the better. Again, this card is Pisces. So Neptune and Pisces. Neptune and Pisces is like manifestation on steroids. And I think that's why this card keeps coming up for everyone is because I feel the universe is like saying, you are going to get exactly what you are focused on. So you know, make sure you're focusing on what you do want, not on what you don't want, Sagittarius. We're going to pull three yes, no cards now. Uh, we're going to do one, two, and uh, three right here. One, two, three. Feel free to pause this reading if you need time to think your questions. For question number one, you have the Queen of Wands. Yes, I feel like you're very attractive at this time. I feel like you're attracting a lot of people and, and a lot of attention in general. But it's funny because, you know, again, I feel like there's just like one person that eventually stands out. I say eventually because if I'm being honest with you, I'm not so sure that this person comes in this year for most of you. It, of course, it's always possible. We can meet people whenever we want. But, you know, what I would say is, I feel like maybe you meet this person towards the end of the year. Uh, also doesn't look like it starts as a relationship right away, or maybe it's just like distant, so it's kind of starting a little slow. But again, I feel like it's something that's gonna pick up very quickly. Uh, for question two, uh, I would say no, I feel like you need to let go of something here. It popped into my head as no. I I don't actually hate the four pentacles, but I read intuitively and intuitively I feel no. For question number three, hell yes, ace of swords. Definitely a victory coming in for you. And I also feel some sort of truth or closure coming in for you as well. So it could be closure from the past. The thing is, I think you already knew the truth. <laughs> so I kind of feel it saying like, don't doubt your intuition. You already know the answer uh, to this question. So there you go. But I like this ad So Thank you for being here, Sagittarius. Really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you and definitely enjoy your month.